All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And of course, of course, we have a great action plaque. Action plaque? <laughs> what? Action packed vlog for you this week. Keep in mind that as you're watching this vlog and as you're watching the double feature on Monday that I am I am gone. I am in North Carolina. So as this vlog is is airing, I am I am also airing in the air in an aeroplane to Winston-Salem, North Carolina for Vape Mania 15. Very, very excited to uh, see all my vapey friends again and hang out. I'm doing a seminar, and I have like 12 pages. No, let's count how many pages. 17 pages of seminar notes uh, for vaping and YouTube, and it's it's just going to be a really fun time. Really excited about Vape Mania. So keep that in mind. Comments will probably not just straight up not be getting replied to. I'm going to try my best when I get back. Pardon me to get caught up a little bit, but as it stands, I'll be in the air. Probably won't be flying. Thankfully, I already have my vlog notes out, and people always uh, people always comment and say, "Grim, how come you don't open your vlog notes until you start the vlog?" Well, I have them up. I have them already up and open this time. First thing on the docket that I want to talk about: Vapor Trails, Connecticut. So Ruby, Ru, and myself are headed up to Connecticut for a fundraiser. And let me get to the website here. CT Vapor Trail 2015 featuring, <laughs> featuring, we're, bit, we're not really featured. I don't know if we're gonna be featured. Grim Green and Ruby Roo, this is to raise money for the Connecticut Safada chapter. It's gonna be Sunday, September 27th, 2015, noon to five in South Glastonbury, Connecticut. Glastonbury, that's a very British sounding Glastonbury, Glastonbury, Connecticut. Um, it is, I don't know, what's general admission? General admission's 30 bucks to get in. There's gonna be a, a huge raffle. There's early bird tickets still available. You get uh, gift bags with e-liquid and goodies. Um, you, there's also going to be a giant, uh, giant raffle. In fact, let me find the email. Galaxy Mods has donated a pretty, pretty beautiful looking device. It's this Geppetto. I think it's a Geppetto. It looks like a Geppetto. It kind of is this like marbly wood grain. It, that super doesn't appeal to me, but the mod itself uh, it just looks, it just looks beautiful. So shout out to Galaxy Mods for donating this sweet mod to give away, like I said, Vapor Trail 2015. Uh, up in uh, Glansbury, Connecticut, on uh, September 27th. So everybody, come out! Should be a, a really, a really fun time. I'm excited uh, to hang out with Ruby Roo once again. This might be the last time we get to hang out this year, and so I'll be stoked to obviously stoked to see her and hang out with her again. And I get to see Kevin. I get to see Kevin from VP Live, who I haven't seen in a really long time. When was the last time I saw Kevin from Vapor Trail or Vapor Trail from uh, VP Live? I think it was Philadelphia. Good lord, that's been way too long, Kevin. We need to hang out. Uh, we need to hang out way more. But yeah, I'm spending today vlog shooting, packing before my flight. You can kind of see I've got my my vape case open open over here, and I always overpack. I just do. It's just a thing that happens. I overpack constantly all my vape gear, but. Uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So fellow named Timu on Facebook uh, sent me a link to a blog, which I'll be posting a link to in the description, obviously, this video about the vaping situation in Finland. So they're they're getting it they're getting it just as hard as we are as far as the regulations go. And there's some reasonable regulations and they're like, sure, no sales under the age of 18. Absolutely. Salesperson must be present when an e-cig or liquid is handed over slash sold to a customer. Sure, that just makes sense. Consumers cannot acquire or receive electronic cigarettes or liquid via mail from outside Finland. Okay, so no more online ordering. Cannot be sold otherwise or handed over via any kind of distance, phone, internet, mail order. Products must release consistent doses under normal operating conditions, including provisions for variable wattage devices and puff flank. 
So basically, I guess all devices can manage this. He put a little note that says, I basically think all devices can manage this. Um, child resistant bottles, yeah, sure, that's a, I mean, that's a no, that's a no brainer. Container maximum size 10 mils, 10 mil bottles only, the highest nick level you can have is 20 milligrams, sure. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah, the, nobody vapes 20. Nobody vapes 24 anymore. I mean, at least, I'm no, I don't want to say nobody vapes 24. A lot of the people that I talk to don't generally vape that high. But 20 mil, 20 milligram would be the highest you could get. 10 mil bottle would be the biggest bottle you can get. Additionally, any tank on your device cannot be bigger than two mils of liquids. Cannot be, cannot be more than two mils of liquid, regardless of the tank type. Liquids cannot have any flavorings. Flavoring products can also not be sold otherwise or handed over together with liquids. If it is, if it, or if the packaging success that they are intended for e-liquids, they cannot be placed in close proximity to e-liquids within stores. So basically they're saying your e-liquid will have no flavor, zero flavor liquid, Additionally, the store isn't allowed to sell unflavored liquid and a flavoring and say, just go home and mix these two together and then, and then you'll get your juice. They're not allowed to do that. They're not even allowed to have flavorings in the same store, in the same area as their, their unflavored liquid would, would be. That is, that, is, uh, that is crazy. Anyway, this list goes on, on and on. Selling liquids would require a permit costing 500 euros a year. Uh, obviously, any advertising and marketing would be banned. Electronic cigarettes and liquids and their brands cannot be displayed in retail stores. A dedicated store display. A dedicated store can display their products provided the space has a separate entrance and the products are not visible from the outside. It, it's that's bizarre. That's weird. That's like going into speakeasy territory. But I can't. I mean, Finland is getting it. Uh, Finland is getting it just as bad. And I'm going to post a link in the description if any of my viewers are in Finland and want to find out more about what the Ministry of Health is doing over there in Finland. Then certainly I'll post that link in the description. Thank you, Timo, for sending that over my way. Um, one more thing. I do have a quick update on California. Uh, Eric sent me over this newspaper article from, uh, and it's just a, whoops, where did it go? And it's just a uh, JPEG. It's not, it's not an article that I can actually link to, but basically they're talking about the bills that Leno has introduced and they're Post, they're, they're, they're kind of presenting it in a very positive light, like this would be really great. These taxes would, you know, dissuade people from smoking and dissuade people from, from vaping, and that's what we want. And it would be, oh, so good for public health if people weren't smoking or vaping. And then there's an interesting thing here. Uh, towards the end, Senator Joel Anderson, remember that, Senator Joel Anderson, who's a Republican, spoke against two of the measures, including one by Senator Mike McGuire, Democrat, that would let local governments impose their own tobacco taxes. This is his quote. This is his quote, and it blew my mind. If we want to ban cigarettes, let's just ban them, Anderson said. Senator Joel Anderson said this. If we want to ban cigarettes, then let's just ban them. This slow approach makes no sense to me. Letting go local governments raise tobacco taxes would likely discourage smoking. That's the point of a tobacco tax. That's the government's reasoning for a tobacco tax is to discourage smokers. Raising the tobacco tax would likely discourage smoking and cut into the state's tobacco revenues cut into the state's tobacco revenues. I think we have to be very careful that we don't kill the golden goose. I think, let me read that again. I think we have to be very careful that we don't kill the golden goose. This is clearly about money. He is saying that the tobacco tax revenue is the golden goose because it's always coming in. That's their golden goose, and they don't want to kill that. So by killing vaping, they're effectively not killing the golden goose, and that's why he's against these tobacco, you know, raising the tobacco taxes, because 
he doesn't want smokers to be discouraged and quit smoking. Because if they quit smoking because of too high of a tax, then they're not going to have that income. They're not going to have what Senator Joel Anderson is calling the golden goose. That is, wow. That is amazing because it, he has, when he says it, he, it, there's nothing about health in it. There's nothing about like health of the community, health of the state, health of, our, of these local areas. He's basically saying this would affect our income. This would affect our golden goose. So we can't tax them too much because we don't want to discourage them from quitting. That's effectively what he said. That isn't, that's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. I'm going to put this, I guess, uh, on Imager if it's not already there. And I'll post a link in the description to where you can read it if you're so interested. But holy crap, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't believe that. And speaking about California, I put this video on Facebook and I'm going to put it here as well. It's just a quick little two minute video of me uh, making a phone call to, uh, I don't remember the gal's name, Atkins, Tony Atkins. Um, I'm going to post a link in the description for this CASA uh, call to action, the website, and it's super easy. You put in your name and address and it'll go and tell you the person that you need to call and what bills to say that you're against. And it's so easy. It's so easy. Anybody can do it. It takes one minute out of your day. Literally one minute out of your day. So this is uh, this is the phone call I made. Hi, is Mr. Atkins in right now? May I ask who's speaking? Uh, I'm just a citizen. Oh, yeah, she's actually in a meeting right now. Okay. So, um, is there something I can do for you? Uh, well, I wanted to pass along uh, just my opinions on some assembly bills that are coming up, if that's possible. Perfect. Yeah, no, I can be able to relay this message back to her. Okay. Uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Nicholas Green. Nicholas Green? Yeah. What's your zip code? Uh, it's... Yeah. Okay. And then what are the bills and what's your position? Uh, I'm, uh, the bills are ABX26. Right, 26, uh-huh. Um, ABX216. 216, uh-huh. And SBX213. SBX213. Yes. Okay, and what are your position on all these bills? Uh, very, very much against these bills. Yes, absolutely, I am. Okay, then I will go ahead and relay this message back to the speaker and let her know um, that where you stand on these, each of these bills. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, you have a great rest of the day. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, I didn't get to talk to uh, Tony Atkins, uh, so there you go. I left a message with her secretary expressing my extreme opposition uh, for these uh, assembly and senate bills in California. It's it's really just that easy. Uh, I'm going to see who else I can call, but it literally that took what 30 seconds. No big deal. I would really encourage you just just do it. Just make the call. It's it's super easy and painless. And you'll obviously help protect vaping in the process. unbelievably unbelievably incredibly easy and I'm gonna call again I want I want to talk to Tony Atkins and I want to tell her directly into her ear hole how I feel about these and so I, 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 I fi I'm fine leaving and I'm against these bills with her secretary but I would love to love to just talk to her directly so just do it God, it's so easy. I'll post links in the description. It's super easy. Um, I've got two more things to talk about before we get so far into this vlog that there's no turning back. Uh, Christopher sent me an email. A fellow named Christopher sent me an email and he says, Hey Nick, I just want to start off by saying I love your videos. I watch them as soon as you upload them. Appreciate all you do. Thank you, Christopher. Obviously, thank you so much. I recently bought a Tug Life box clone. Clone! From a manufacturer in China. 
When I got it, I was so excited to try it out. I opened it up, I grabbed my favorite pair of batteries and I popped them in. I knew it was a parallel box, but in the back of my head, the excitement got to me. I looked in the sled and saw positive and negative labeled on the battery sled. When I popped the batteries in as labeled on the sled, they began to spark and burn. I quickly pulled them out, put them on the floor, grabbed my towels, put them outside. The box was okay. I can still use it, but the batteries had vented and melted due to this box sled being mislabeled. It was labeled as a series sled and not a parallel sled. The point of this email is to bring attention to Chinese manufacturers as well as consumers, obviously, uh, and making safe products for consumers. I thought maybe you could tell the story so that people who have may bought the same product from the same manufacturer is aware of this flaw and also preach a little about battery safety. Yes, I, I constantly talk about battery safety. I attached some pictures. Uh, yeah, so he grabbed his poor pair of HE4 batteries and sure enough, the sled is mislabeled. If you look at the sled, and the sled is, you know, what's here? Let me show you. This is not the Tug Life box. This is the sled where your batteries go. And on this one, it's a series box. So there's a positive side on this side, and then down here is the positive. You put one up and one down. That's series. When it's in parallel, both positives go up. And in an unregulated Tug Life box, they're supposed to be parallel, not series, but parallel. And when he opened his box, it was labeled as series, but it was really parallel. Just a heads up. If you're buying the Tug Life clone or any, you know, any mod, any mod with a sled, verify that it's series or parallel and put the batteries in accordingly, thinking, keeping in mind that, yeah, your sled could be mis labeled uh, if it's coming from China, which is apparently a thing that uh, a thing that happens. So last thing I want to talk about here in the in the introduction part of the video, even though this introduction part tends to run a little bit long, a uh, fella named mm, no, I am not saying his name and it doesn't even start with an M fella on Facebook messaged me and I'm going to try to actually no, I'm not going to try to find his message. He just, he didn't want me to use his name. He didn't want me using his message, but I'm going to share with you these pictures. So these are juice labels from Malaysia. Juice labels from Malaysia. Keep in mind that these juice labels are from Malaysia. That Look at these. They are ridiculous. There's some that look exactly like Sprite. There's some that look exactly like Mentos. There's some that look exactly like Vanilla Coke. That is ridiculous. There's some that look exactly like Dunhill and Marlboro uh, cigarettes. There's one that looks like Nescafe. That is ridiculous. And there's one that looks exactly like Nutella. Like it's the Nutella logo. So here we are in the United States and we're facing all these issues with our e-liquids and you know we're kind of calling out vendors that are copyright infringement or possibly perceived to marketing as kids. And right now I want to give a huge shout out to Juicy Ohms. Juicy Ohms was one of the worst offenders and I ran into him uh, at ECC and he handed me his new business card and I read it and I was like, Juicy Ohms? And it was black with just a classy circle-y logo and it says Juicy Ohms. He's like, yeah, we're changing our labels. And I was like, that's awesome. That's, fuck yeah, good on you for doing that. That's awesome. And they have all these new labels and they're classy and black with a cool ovally, with a cool circle-y logo and it has the flavors. That's cool. I mean, these vendors are taking notice. They're changing their labels accordingly, and this is great. And we, that's something that we can do in America. Changing a label is literally, I've said this before, changing a label is literally the easiest thing that a juice vendor can do. It's so easy, it's ridiculous. But now, there's juice vendors in Malaysia, somewhere where we have no jurisdiction. How do we hold Malaysian juice vendors accountable? Assuming that someone could get this Malaysian juice into the United States, you can't explain it. If a senator or a health ministry person pulled up this picture of the Mentos e-liquid or the vanilla Coke e-liquid or the Tropicana 
e-liquid, how would you explain that? How, how would we explain that? We go, oh, no, 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 that's, those, none of those are made in America. Those are made in Malaysia. Those are, we can't, those are made in Malaysia. So that's okay, right? I mean, they're in Malaysia. We can't police the entire world. It's their fault that that looks exactly like vanilla Coke or that looks exactly like Sprite or that looks exactly like Tropicana. The Tropicana one blows me away. How do we, how do, we do that? How? How? How do we hold Malaysian juice vendors accountable? Um, this person didn't want me using their name, but these pictures are out there. Maybe I'll make a photo gallery on uh, on Imager as well, so you can check it, uh, check out these labels. And uh, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if I want these shared around all over the place. I'm not going to post them anywhere. I just feel like that might be a bad idea if someone, like a senator, or a congressman, or something gets a hold of these pictures and is like, oh, what about this Tropicana one? What about this one that looks like orange juice? Kids drink orange juice. Kids drink Sprite. Kids eat Nutella. Of course kids eat Nutella. It's fucking delicious. Eating Nutella used to be a requirement of being in the Grim Army. You had to enjoy Nutella. But yeah, those labels. Those labels are crazy. Those labels are crazy. So... We've already covered a whole bunch. We talked about the Vapor Trail event in Connecticut, uh, Malaysian juices, Finland vaping. Uh, I don't have time for nickel wire. Oh, I'm sorry. I just don't. I just don't have time for nickel wire this week. I've been having some health, not health concerns physically, but some health concerns regarding the safety of, uh, of nickel wire. And the more I look into it, uh I just want to say, as it stands right now, I'm using zero nickel wire. I just, until I can do more research, I don't feel comfortable using it. Um, just don't feel comfortable using 100% nickel wire. There's some, there's some stuff, and I'm sorry I can't expand on that right now. But I am pressed. I am pressed for time. We're already way too far into this vlog. We still have beer to do. We still have a lot of first impressions to do. We still have, uh, I don't have a retro vaping planned, but I do have a reviews for things that never got reviews planned there at the end. If we have some time, if we have some time at the end, which we won't, we won't. I'm sorry. The nickel wires just, it's going to have to wait till next week. Remind me uh, that next week we do, yes, absolutely have to touch on nickel wire. But for right now, we're going to go over there to the beer section. Not as cool as I thought it would be. All right, welcome to the beer section. Tonight's beer on tap that we have. So this is a collaboration ale. Ale? I don't know why I said ale. It's not an ale, it's a stout. This is a collaboration uh, between Stone Brewing, Brewing? Brewing, which is a great brewery. Uh, Drew Curtis, Will Wheaton, Greg Koch. It's called Stone Farking Wheaton Woot Stout. Dude. Woot Stout. And I've heard literally nothing but good things about this beer. And, you know, I live in, a, in an area where I can get good beer, like on the reg. YOLO on the reg. I can get good beer all the time. And so I was really excited to see this at my corner market. Uh, I believe John, Mr. John, who was just down here in San Diego, John uh, was the first person to recommend me this Hoot Stout. This is a 13% alcohol by volume stout. And this is the one night. I just want you guys to know this. I've started a uh, started a new sort of diet situation that's happening. And beer and booze are strictly off the table. But there's one night a week on the cheat day where I'm going to drink beer. And the only beer that I drink all week long is going to be this vlog beer. So... Get excited, feel special, because it's just for you. Now, there is an insanely long description on here. I mean, that's a novel. That's a book. I'm not even going to bother to read that. I, I can't. I can't possibly read that. So, we're going to check out stonebrewery.com. Stone, I don't, I don't actually know if it's stonebrewery.com. Oh, it's stonebrewing.com. And I'm going to see if they have anything to say about this Woot Stout. Yeah, so Stone has a lot of a lot of really good, really good beers. I've tried their Ruination. I've tried their Ruin 
10 IPA. I've tried the smoked porter. I've tried their, oh, they have a coffee milk stout. I haven't tried their coffee milk stout. Chai spiced Russian imperial stout. See, that that sounds awesome. And, of course, they, they have the double bastard, the arrogant bastard, the lucky bastard. All really good stuff. Okay, stone collaborations. Let's let's take a look at this stone at these stone collaborations. Yes, this is what we're looking for. The Woot Stout. Let's read about it. It doesn't say anything that I don't already know. <laughs> it's an Imperial Stout. Uh, it was created by Will Wheaton, Greg Koch. Oh, he's the founder of, of Stone Brewing, and Drew Curtis, Fark.com creator. Yeah. That doesn't even tell me anything that I don't already know. Okay. Righteously flavorful Imperial Stout has been a favorite among our fans. And since its inception in 2013, blah, 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 up the barrel aging quotient for 2015, on and on and on, adding to the mix a version of the last year's vintage, so and so and so, aged in bourbon barrels for a year. This whoppingly complex stout will cellar beautifully if you can wait that long. Well... I got news for you, Mr. Will Wheaton. I cannot wait that long. So, thankfully, no corks present. The cork fear is real. I'm gonna be pouring this uh, over my keyboard into a, uh, a this type of glass. It's not quite a tulip glass, it's a tulip style glass. I have a feeling this is gonna be dark with a very small head, even with a heavy pour. Even with a heavy pour, I'm not gonna get, uh, I'm not gonna get that much head. That is a very, very dark, dense, stouty head on there and I mean that's the darkest that's one of the blackest blackest dark black beers I've ever seen in my life so going over to beer advocate they rate this as a double 90 percent so they rate it as a 90 percent and then the reviewers have collectively rated it as a 90 percent and they say this is an ale brewed with pecans wheat and rye uh, with one quarter aged bourbon barrels Brewed at Stone Brewing Company uh, by Greg Koch, Drew Curtis, and Will Wheaton. I'm excited. I was a big Star Trek fan. So you know what? Whatever Will Wheaton has to offer, I am going to consume. Let's look at the top reviewer here. What he has to say about it. Pours an opaque black with a dark foamy head. So far, he's really, really correct. I mean, he's really on it. Small streaks of lace, foam around the glass. Uh, smell is of dark roasted malt, cocoa, cookie dough, and slight bourbon and wood aromas. Cookie dough? Tastes much like the same as the sweet cocoa alcohol flavors on the finish. There's a mild amount of roasty bitterness on the palate with each sip. This beer has a good level of carbonation. What I think he meant to say there was effervescence and a crisp mouthfeel. Overall, very good beer with nice aromas. The taste is pretty alcohol forward. Alcohol forward. See, when I originally tasted the first, originally tasted Golden Drock, had that alcoholy flavor to it, and that's kind of one of the attributes I actually really liked about it. So here's to ya, Stone. Here's to Will Wheaton, Star Trek. Mhm. Mm super creamy, super sweet. It's insanely sweet. I taste uh like raisins, black currant, sweetness. Uh, I wish he had never said cookie dough because I actually do taste like a doughy type of bready uh, flavor in it, but it is surprisingly clean for a stout. It's got an insanely heavy mouthfeel, like the way it feels in your mouth. I can feel that bitterness in my jowls. It's delicious. Mm. Oh my God. Oh, I just realized that I'm not going to be able to drink this for another week. I used to, I, I partake in beer almost nightly. It's just something, it's a ritual. I enjoy it. I enjoy loving it. And this new diet, I guess, is going to get rid of that. And now I can't drink beer except once a week. And I, and I choose to share that beer time with you, with you, with you fine vlog viewers. Mm-hmm. Wood Stout. Wow, it is sweet and very alcoholy. It tastes like bourbon. Like it tastes like a stout that has actual, like literal bourbon in it. Like they just took some some bullet and poured it in this bottle as well. It's like beer bourbon. Which is to say, 
super effing delicious. In fact, I do have a juice that I know would pair amazing with this. Uh, Malzing with this. Now this is from uh, this is from Poor House, Poor House, and this is their butter bean juice. Currently rocking it on my favorite new toy, Petri Blue Petri Red Atomizer Blue Petri Dip Drip Tip. We're gonna do this pairing. It's gonna be it's gonna be just delightful. Oh yeah, holy crap. Oh, this is what I'm vaping tonight. This is what I'm vaping. I'm going to vape this. I'm going to drink this. I'm going to sit in my living room and I'm going to watch some Sons of Anarchy. And it's just going to be a delightful time. Let's try that again. Oh, that's good. Boy, that is delicious. Man, I'm really nailing these accidental beer pairings. Literally, they are all accidental. I just look at whatever I have over here on the side of my desk, and if one of those might pair with it, I give it a shot. But I knew, I knew I would be tasting Woot Stout tonight, and maybe that's why I decided to build this and put Butterbean in it. There you go. It is what it is, and it's the beer section. Thank you so much for joining me. Now we're going to get on to the regular vlog, which I'm, assume, I'm assuming is going to be shout-out time. All right, well, we do have some shout outs to do. Uh, just as a heads up, and I say this in a lot of vlogs, my shout out list is long. It's long. I'm just now getting to shout outs that should have been back in June. June! That's how long the list is. So I appreciate you sharing people, sharing their stories with me, and I absolutely will do my best to get you a shout out, but it's not a guaranteed thing. First shout out comes from Nikki. I believe this came to me via Facebook. I would like to send a shout out to my fiance, Justin. He watches your vlogs every week and is always excited to see what you try next. This would mean a great deal to me if you could do this for him. You're his favorite vape reviewer. Our five year anniversary is on September 15th. <gasps> September 15th. I didn't miss it. <laughs> our relationship has been through many ups and downs, but we always make it through. One of our ups has been deciding to quit traditional cigarettes altogether. We both have been smoke-free since our decision. As a team, we can make it through anything, and we will continue to do so. That's just so inspiring. Absolutely. Nick, Justin, Nick, Nikki, Justin, consider your guys. Shout it out. Happy anniversary. Wish you obviously nothing but uh, the most the most happiness that you can uh, that you can possibly be. The next one is going to be uh, a little bit longer and uh, it's a little bit more intense. And this is just this is just a thing that happens. And I feel like I need to share it. And I need to get in my shout out pose where I lean on my chair and I move my microphone. This comes to me from Ryan. Now, Ryan sent this to me on Facebook. He says, "Hey Nick, I just wanted to share a story with you about how much uh, you've helped me and my father kick the cigs." It started over three years ago. Uh, it started off over three years ago when I started getting some off a friend for free. And after one, I was hooked uh, and bad. After 10, it was more and more and I didn't want to stop or anything. He's talking about cigarettes. Until one day, my dad, a smoker of 40 years plus, he smoked 60 cigarettes a day and didn't want to stop either even though it was causing him, him massive health problems from his heart to his lungs. Well, one day I came in from a night out and found my father in the bathroom not breathing. So I quickly jumped straight away and started pumping his chest while crying my eyes out. I figured for, I, fight, I fought for 23 minutes to keep him with us. Eventually the ambulance came and took over. After a few hours, I got a call from the hospital saying uh, you should come and say your goodbyes. He isn't going to be here long. So I jumped in the car and I flew up there. Uh, he flew in a car. He, j he got in his car and flew up there and he wasn't stopping for anyone or anything until he got there and seen the man that I looked up to and admired so much, looking so weak, his face was gray and lifeless, like a man that, I, that, like a man that had given up. I said I wasn't saying goodbye, but fight on. After all this guy's blazing, eventually I had to leave him. I went and slept in the waiting room until morning. When I woke up in the morning, he was still here. 
and he had listened to my words and was fighting. They took him to the intensive care unit, uh, which he stayed for eight weeks in a coma, and they found all of his problems. He had cancer of the throat, lungs, and heart, and bones. Lungs, throat, heart, and bones. Uh, the cancer attacked his throat, so he had to have his voice box removed. When he woke up, uh, after when he woke, when he woke up, he had to have his voice box removed when he woke up. So now, after 40 years of smoking, he's quit with your help and helpful videos. Every day is a battle, but I want to thank you for changing not just my dad's life, but mine. I have been cigarette-free for two years now, and it's also given me a new career working in a local vape shop. So thank you. From all of my family, uh, my father asked me to send you a picture. If you could shout him out in the vlog, I'd be grateful once again. Uh, yes, absolutely, Ryan. You and your father, whose name I don't think you mentioned, you and your father are, are absolutely shouted out. Um, your father definitely sounds like a fighter, and this is a perfect example of how seriously difficult it is to stop tobacco cigarettes. Health issues after health issue after health issue, you just keep smoking and keep smoking and keep smoking. And money and taxes are not a deterrent. They're not gonna discourage a smoker because you need it. You need that, you need the nicotine. You need to smoke. Uh, it's, you know, you can look at like a heroin junkie they will or any 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 drug you know addicted person they will sell their belongings they will become homeless and sell everything they have and use all their money just to get that next fix uh and you know i'm certainly not saying anything bad about drug addicts or anything like that but it's the same way i mean you you just keep smoking you just keep Smoking. This guy ended up with cancer of the throat, lungs, and heart. Bones. He had to have his voice box removed, and uh, him and his uh, son have finally quit smoking. So, congratulations. Absolutely. Consider yourself shouted out, Ryan and Father. Uh, I have two more quick shout outs left. Um, this one is, this is old. This comes from the 4th of July. Uh, he says, I was hoping you could give a shout out. This comes to me from Omi. Omi? OMI. Ami, Omi, I was hoping you could give a shout out to Mustafa, my handsome and loving husband of 16 years. We have been vaping over two years now, uh, almost a year into vaping. I set us up with some K funds and DNAs, and he has been totally content and stuck with that type of setup since. Me, I have been more of the hobbyist. I cannot help myself when I find something interesting. I just go all in. He puts up with me spending my evenings and days off watching yours and many other vaping reviews and shows, not to mention all of the vape gear. Having said that, he is the love of my life and I'm so blessed that he is supportive of me and he is such a good man. Absolutely, Mustafa, consider yourself shouted out. Congratulations on both of you getting away from cigarettes. And I just, uh, I always love it when you have uh, supportive, significant others. Um, this one's from August. Hi, Nick. My name is Stefan. Uh, I'm from Romania. On the 29th of August is my best friend's birthday. So I did miss it. I miss this. His name is, mm, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Uh, his nickname is Axis, which I think would be much easier to, for you to pronounce. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you for thinking of me. I have problems mispronouncing everything. So uh, he introduced me to vaping back in 2012 and also showed me your YouTube channel. I hope you can give this shout out for him in time for his birthday because I know you have a lot and you're very busy with your schedule. It would be an awesome birthday gift for him. Best wishes. Keep on vaping. I, I apologize. I apologize, Axis. I didn't get your shout out for your birthday, but happy birthday. Consider yourself shouted out. Keep up the good work. Stay tobacco free. That's uh, that's the most important part. And I do have one last shout out I wanted to do. So Ryan, Ryan sent me over these pretty funny pictures. And, it, you know, this isn't his original idea, but it is a pretty good idea nonetheless. Penn and Teller, one time and a long time ago in their uh, in their show bullshit on Showtime, um, they had a bunch of hippies sign a petition to ban dihydrogen monoxide, which of course is just 
water. It's just H2O. Dihydrogen monoxide is water. And so he kind of made up these uh, these these pictures. Okay. 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 You get muted. People stop texting me. He kind of made up these pictures, these like alarmist pictures to kind of show how easy it is to fall into this alarmist like if you saw these you'd share them on Facebook and you'd be like you guys we got to ban dihydrogen monoxide at least I know a couple people especially in my family that would probably jump on these and uh, and attempt to ban dihydrogen monoxide but there's a picture of a beaker it says dihydrogen monoxide is an acid with a pH level of 7 that's higher than any pH level that's a higher pH level than any other acid it's, uh, it's just water. Again, it's just water. There's another one here. He has a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, Lysol up there. And he says, all of these products contain dihydrogen monoxide. Do you really want your kids drinking Lysol? Powerful, powerful stuff. The last one he has, an average of 4 million gallons of dihydrogen monoxide is used for each fracking job. Simply transporting it to the job site leads to a significant environmental costs. It's easy. This is this is not intended to be super, super funny. It's intended to make you think and go, wow, it would be this easy to get people all in a tizzy and angry about dihydrogen monoxide when they don't really know what's going on. And it translates very, very easily into the vaping world where politicians and, and mainstream media newspapers, they can get people all in a tizzy about... Uh, you know about vaping like oh do you want your kids do you want your kids vaping antifreeze no of course not we should ban vaping it's easy it's easy to do uh you need to you need to get in there you need to do your research and figure out what's really going on because if i hadn't watched that episode of pen and teller i would have bought into this i mean i'm assuming i would have seen this and went what wait the hydrogen monoxide of course i probably could have spent eight seconds on Google and figured out what dihydrogen monoxide by high dihydrogen monoxide. Oh, it, yeah, the first search result is dihydrogen monoxide hoax. So anyway, just goes to show how easy you can get people up into a tizzy. So we did some shout outs. We did beer. We did a whole bunch of stuff. Right now, it is time for some first impressions. So boom, first impression time. Here we go. What am I going to do? What am I going to first impressionate first? How about this? This is the Watofo. Sorry. This is the Watofo. What's this thing called? The Freak Show Tiny. This is the Freak Show Tiny single 18650 60 watt temperature control box. And uh, someone on Facebook said it looks like a little arcade cabinet. I think it kind of looks like a little arcade cabinet. I've been really enjoying this. I love the size of it. And you can't appreciate it because you're not me, but this texture on here is just uh just beautiful. It's like a soft, it's like a soft. Oh. It's like a soft perfect little texture. I don't know, it's so hard to explain, but it just feels so nice. You have up down buttons, you have a USB that it says that doesn't charge, but I charge through it, so figure that one out. It does use that squishy button. So if you're into squishy buttons, then this might be better. I would uh, literally love this device with a MyTech switch on it. I would probably love it a lot more than I do. It does have uh, some quirks that I've run into, a few kinks maybe, if you will, but overall it's been nice. It has a adjustable 510 on it, and I didn't know that, and I thought it was spring-loaded, so everything I was putting on here wasn't working. And I'm like, well, this sucks. That's a piece of junk. And then I was like, oh, yeah, that's adjustable, not spring-loaded. So I adjusted it up a little bit, and now it fits uh, well. It's working uh, It's working just great, and it asks you, same coil? No, it's not the same coil. It does do one annoying thing. It does do one annoying thing. And it does that snow wolf thing, where if you leave it sitting for, let's say, I don't know, 15 minutes, and you pick it up, it's locked. And you go, oh, okay, well, I'm going to unlock it. No, your first click doesn't count. Your first click gets you away from the screen that says locked. So you have to click it once to get away from that screen, and then click it three times, and then it will be unlocked. 
So annoying, so annoying. I was sitting on my couch watching television and I picked it up and I went, oh, it's not firing. Oh, it's locked. Why didn't it unlock? Oh, now it's unlocked. Four times you have to click it to get it unlocked. It tells you three, but the first click is just to get away from the freaking un three clicks screen. It, it gives you a little screen like the DNA you know, 40 or DNA 200 mods do. It says, nope, this is locked. You gotta unclick it, you gotta unlock it with three clicks click to get away from that screen and then three clicks to unlock and one thing i didn't know is i had assumed that this was an original watofo design and they sent me a weird hat too i assumed this was a original watofo design i thought that's a cool design even the colors the black and the red that just looks cool and then a fella named christopher got on here and said, and you know, we're not calling anybody out. And he made it clear he's not calling anybody out. He says, apparently this is a clone of the original Titan Mini from another company. At least that's what I've heard. And I said, huh, I'm not familiar with the Titan Mini. I don't know anything about it. My Google Foo came up fruitless. And he said, let me see what I can find. It was on a discussion earlier and I'd seen it and it was pretty blatantly obvious. And he said, this was brought up in a discussion earlier and normally, uh, I get it, there's only so much you can do, but when it's the same damn button and color, it just struck me as odd. And absolutely, there's a mod that's the Titan Mini, same 18650 right here, same exact color scheme, same button, slightly different screen. The Titan Mini has two buttons up here and then an oval shape for the DNA to go in, and this has a square and two buttons down here. It's very, very, slightly different but it looks <laughs> it looks a lot like this titan mini which i had never heard of and it kind of makes me want a titan mini even though i you know the last thing i need is another dna 40 device and i said wow absolutely that uh, looks a lot like the titan mini i thought watofo really had an original design here and he's like yeah i'm just reposting what was discussed i'm not trying to stir anything up i don't know about i don't know much about who makes the original i just thought it was interesting though and then you see then i saw you post this uh you probably see more mods than i do so i didn't know if you had crossed paths with the titan mini before i had not i had not uh I had not come across that, but apparently this is a clone of the Titan Mini, which, sure, I mean, it's still a clone, even if the mod that you're cloning isn't uh, very widely known, it's still a clone. So uh, a lot of people aren't gonna know that. They're gonna believe this to be an original design from Watofo, and unfortunately, it's not. It's just not an original design, but it's still, it's still kind of freaking cool. And I'm gonna link you in the description to the Watofo site, Freak Show Tiny. They say Freak Show Tiny is a true temperature control box, 60 watt mod, powerful vapor can be generated. I love the, I love the Chinese descriptions. Uh, over temp protection, uh, reverse voltage protection. It says, great feeling when you hold it. <laughs> great feeling when you hold it. That They're actually right about that, the soft finish on this. Uh, it's an authentic, true temperature control 60 watt mod. It supports nichro or nickel and titanium. Uh, under power mode, uh, it uses common wires. Fires down to 0 0.1 to 2.5 ohms, black and red colors, but more colors coming soon. There you go. And it doesn't have a, a price on here. Freak Show Tiny. Let's see if we can find a price for this freaking thing. The Watofo site does not have a price. Uh, it looks like Vapor Tech has it in stock for $69.99. Oh, okay. I am clicking off of your website, Vapor Tech USA, because you do the thing that annoys me the most. You have your age identification thing pop up and block the whole site, which is fine, that's allowed. And then on top of that, you have another pop-up that says, join our newsletter packed with deals. No, 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 no. So not going to Vapor Tech site, Vapor Tech USA anymore. Let's go to uh, the Grumpy Vapor. What do you have to say about this? Still doesn't have a price. Uh, 70 bucks. It's going to be about 70 bucks USA. And it actually really looks cool with that, uh, really looks cool with that cubed atomizer on top. I might have to rebuild that 
atomizer squared from uh, Watofo because it looks cool and I bet since you can adjust the 510 on here you could get it to sit just perfectly flat and have a square addy on top that might look cool that might be my uh, that might be my next uh, that might be my next thing I put on here what I have on here now is what we're gonna do for the second little first impressions this is the monster v3 from 528 custom vapes some people call them 5028 or 528 I say 528 custom vapes monster v3 so this is their tank they've been making this tank for a while and this is the newest version of it and mine has a chuff cap on top and their old one does not their old one has more of a of a of a normal top cap and then you place your drip tip on it this has a chuff style cap that actually screws into the chimney and then it's got this extra wide chimney and some extra airflow in the bottom for those lung hits but i've run into something a little bit weird with this tank and i want to know if anybody else who has the monster v3 has uh, has run into this with this tank so let me just show you can you see on this tank where it's cracking? Do you see right there, right next to that lion head, there's like cracks in the tank? I have not run into a tank cracking like this in years. And maybe it's because we use glass tanks now and this is like a polycarbonate tank, but there's cracks. There's tiny little hairline cracks all over the place. The juice I used in this tank first was Pink Nova. Danielle from Not Blowing Smoke got me a bottle of Pink Nova and I just think it's the best juice. It's just delicious. It got cracked. It started cracking the tank. So I'm like, hmm, maybe it's the juice. I don't know. So I rebuilt it. I replaced the juice. I have Vigilante Juice Co's Life of Pie in here now. The flavor is really really good the airflow is not amazing the airflow is not like an rda if you want to buy this tank expecting an rda experience not a chance it's more like an airy k fun so the flavor is going to be really really good the deck looks exactly like a k fun deck i just built in there like i would with a k fun i wicked it exactly like i would with a k fun and so far it's been amazing not a dry hit to be found no leaking no gurgling only vapor and delicious flavor i think when i go to vape mania this is going to be my my travel setup i'm just going to bring this with me wherever i go so i can stealthily vape in the bathroom you know on my layover in Atlanta. But yeah, uh, Monster V3, it's fun. It's a fun tank. It reminds me of why I liked the K-Fun so much. Uh, I just don't know what's up with that tank. Is anybody else having the problem with the Monster V3 tank having those hairline fractures in it? I, I honestly have not seen this in years. And again, I think it's because all the tanks now use glass and this can't be glass because it needs to have threads on it. So. What are you gonna do? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, let me. Of course, I'll put a link in the description to the uh, 528 Custom Vapes, where you can pick this up. The Monster V3 is about 75 bucks. Uh, I don't know how much the Chuff Kit is, but if you go over to the website, you can kind of get a better idea of what it looks like without the Chuff Cap. It looks a lot, a lot like the K Fun, but it's there. K-Fun modified uh, tank, 75% more airflow than the version two. The version three has 75% more airflow than the version two. 510 pin is made out of copper and allows for any hybrid connection to work. The massive air hole in the base acts as cooling around the center pin and block, allows for sub-ohm chain vaping without melting down the insulator. The center pin and block are one piece and it is gold plated, allowing less voltage drop and more airflow due to the airflow hole size. But yeah. I really enjoyed the Monster V3. You know, I saw these pictures of this tank. I see it all the time, all over Instagram, and I always, I'm like, that's a cool tank. I really like that tank. So yeah, Monster V3 right now on the Watofo Freak Show Tiny. <laughs> and it's weird, I just wanna say it's weird that Watofo named a mod the Freak Show. When they, why would you name a mod after your atomizers? This could have been a completely original name. You could have called it the well, you could have called it the Pizza Baron. I've been wanting someone to name and bought a Pizza Baron for quite a while now. Nice flavor, nice clouds, bruh. I do have some more first impressions to get through. I have two boxes. Actually, I actually have three boxes that I'm gonna talk about. This, this is the Hater Box. Now, this is a uh, 
looks like a Hammond box, has no lean. So that leads me to believe this is a sort of a custom fabricated box, or if there's newer project boxes, which don't have that lean, it's perfectly flat on the bottom and perfectly flat on the top. The inside looks like a Hammond box, the way it is. And the inside of this mod, I don't know if you're gonna see that. Oh, that is snake skin. There is snake skin on the inside of this mod. How friggin' classy is that? That's just classy as hell. Two batteries, this is a parallel box clicky my tech switch and a voltage display the vape that i've been getting from this is fantastic this is without a doubt coming with me to vape mania i got some rainbow sherbet in the dark i've got a gold dot mod version one atomizer along with a gold dot mod drip tip it's just it's just a great vape i just i just really really enjoy it in fact my most sincere apologies to Silversteam Vapor and Lab Rat Liquids. I'm bringing this to Vape Mania instead of bringing a Titan. I know, I know, but I'm bringing this instead. And it's something that you're going to have to deal with. I like that there's snakeskin on the inside. And I like the way this feels in my hand. It's just very, very comfortable. And I like that it's coppery. And that's like a painted finish on there. It's never going to tarnish. It just looks copper and it's never gonna tarnish. There's a Grim Army sort of embossed. It's below the surface on there and it looks beautiful. It just looks great. I think that's laser etched on there and then they, they glossed over it. What I'm gonna do is put a link in the description. They do have a website, hatervapes.com. Let me try to find it here. Where are you, hater vapes? What the crap, seriously? Oh, okay, there you go. Hatervape.com H8 rvape.com they don't have anything on this website this is just where it's going to eventually be sold you have found the home of the hater box if you want a hater box this is not the end of your journey i don't sell through this website and no longer through retail stores building boxes is a hobby and i need to keep it that way there's a select group of serial numbers that have a lifetime warranty but that is no longer available if you have a hater box that needs repair return it to the store you bought it from or contact me directly through the same channel we originally communicated on if you have a hater box and i don't know you or you didn't purchase one from the retailer i sold through there is no warranty and i will deny ever making it wow this guy is a serious modder after reading all that you still want a hater box here's how to get one Find me on social media and ask nicely for a quote. These are handmade, one-of-a-kind custom boxes. I barely make any money building boxes. I do it all for fun and to pay for my vaping habit. I do my absolute best to be good to people and treat them like I would want to be treated. Be safe and vape like a hater. Nate. So that's uh, that's no help. Uh, I don't know if he wants me putting his email out there so you can contact him to get a hater box. But apparently he has these, you know, Gotham City Riddler style clues like find me somewhere on social media and maybe I'll make you a box. There you go. I don't know. I'm thankful for my box. I, I really am enjoying it. I think it's good. I don't think I'll ever do a review for this because he doesn't make them en masse. And he's not, you know, a big production facility. It's just a cool parallel box. Love that MyTech switch. I love the display on it. Tells me how charged my batteries are. Tells me the voltage that I'm getting. I like the spring-loaded 510. I don't even mind that it's off-center. I like that it's away from the button because I can hold it. And it's, I don't know. I like, I, I like most everything about this box. The only one thing that has annoyed me is there's a corner of this display that is creeping up. It's just very slightly creeping up and I can feel it. And I don't want to peel that off because I know it's not designed to be peeled off and I don't want to ruin anything. So I'm going to leave it as it is. But yeah, this mod definitely coming with me to Vape Mania. It's just been a rad vape. So moving forward, I do have another box here. And this, if you remember a long time ago, I did a first impressions slash review of a box from this guy let me get to him let me just get over there where is he where are you mr hooligan let's find him let's find him on facebook 
Yeah, his name is Sean, and he makes the Hooligan mods. And I'm going to link in the description to where you can uh, where you can check out the Hooligan mods. They do have a Facebook page, but if you want to order one of these, you have to contact him. It's kind of like the hater box. <laughs> you have to contact him. I'll post a link to his Facebook as well as their Instagram in the description to this video and you can contact him if you're so into it. I don't know what these are going to cost. So going back, I did a, in an older vlog, I did a, a kind of a first impressions of his Hammond box. He made a Hammond box mod, right? And it had that big horn switch that was squishy and it was just a Hammond box and the door jiggled around a lot and it was you know he had the grim army engraved in there and it was painted green and on the inside he had a 3d printed sled that the batteries were really hard to get in and out and his placement of his 510 seemed to be just haphazard it was like not quite centered but not quite off to one side it was like Buh, and it was over a little bit and you know what i was eternally grateful to sean and more importantly his daughter carly who made this amazing grim army art for me that is on my wall i was just moved by the gesture it wasn't the greatest mod in the world and that's the feedback i gave him i said look this is a cool little project box i don't think i would mass produce these unless you really step up your game and so we didn't have any communication for a while and then he comes back to me and he says dude I just want to tell you I've completely stepped up the game on my mod um, we're doing this that and the other it's a custom machine box we're using a better switch a better 510 a better custom sled a better box it's better everything and I was like awesome I'm like I'm I'm really glad you stepped up your game and holy crap he has stepped up his game. Not only has he ditched the tribal logo that he used to have. Look how cool that is. Hooligan V5 looks cool. I am attracted to this logo without a doubt. That just looks cool. He put a protruding MyTech switch on there that is so nice and so, so clicky. It's just clicky wonderfulness. I just want to keep pressing it. Additionally, spring-loaded 510 connection straight in the center of the mod. Straight in the center of the mod. It's set back just a little bit, but that's because of the door. And this is a custom this is a custom uh, box, right? You know, he has his sticker on the inside. Hooligan, Sean Hooligan. Oh, I just flashed your phone number. I'm going to have to edit that out. Shit, I just flashed your phone number on there. I'm going to cover up your phone number and we're going to try this again. Hooligan on the inside. Facebook Hooligan Mods. Instagram Hooligan Mods. Sorry, Sean. I, uh, I, flashed your, uh, <laughs> I flashed your phone number, but don't worry. We're going to edit it out. He has a new custom 3D printed sled in there. Don't worry. These are wrapped. They're just clear wraps. A, a ribbon to pull the batteries out, right? And this is a series box, and it's clearly labeled positive up, negative down, negative up, positive down, positive down, positive up. It's just, and the magnets, oh, you can put the door on upside down. That's fun. The magnets are great. There are these tiny little magnets in there. I'm going to show you this because it's safer. Tiny little four magnets in there. The door just snaps on with no issue, and there's no play up down sideways there's no machining marks on this on some of these custom machined boxes you can see clear like circles like machining circles on them there's none on this it's just nice and smooth and beautiful now this is a series box so let me show you the build i'm using on here so this is a dual uh anarchist wire 26 gauge that's about 13 wraps on each side and they're centered there in the posts and it came out to around 0 0.7 ohms and 0 0.7 ohms is high and on a series box you want higher ohms at least in my experiences i'm still fiddling around with them still getting used to these series boxes but i found that these high ohms this 0.7 ohm build is awesome on here and this atomizer 
is called called the solstice atomizer that's what it's called it's called the solstice atomizer nice two post atomizer make a nice long series coil in there off the fresh batteries you're getting like seven volts and so 0.7 at seven volts oh it's a good vape it's just nice it's not too hot it's not too warm and ruby Roo, just a heads up i have like a very slight amount of my -E left three milligram my -E, that's it i have it's like it's literally right at the bottom of this sticker i need to get some more i need to get what i need is a 120 ml bottle of the my -E. but on this box this atomizer it all came together the way that it was built the way that it was wicked it's just a great vape. I am really, really tempted to bring this to Vape Mania. <laughs> I'm getting a great vaping experience. So, Sean, Carly, thank you so much uh, for this. It's it's been it's been good so far. And if he wants me to do a full full review for it, if he's ready, if he's if he's ready for production, then I will absolutely do a full review of this. So far, it's been great. And like, you know, with all my first impressions, I need to spend a lot more time with the device to see how it goes in the real world. The only thing I've noticed, and this goes for all box mods, not just this box mod, most box mods, unregulated, there's no, uh, there's no locking feature. And this button sticks out quite a bit. In fact, a couple times I found myself grabbing the mod and grabbing my bottle of juice at the same time and lifting it up and actually hitting the trigger right there with the uh, with the bottle of juice it's a thing it's a thing that happens but absolutely thank you mr sean shout out to you shout out to carly and uh thank you for the thank you for the hooligan box so one last box i have to talk about good lord this is a long first impressions Suric x ah this is the Suric x box now this comes via suricvapes.com i believe uh local vape is actually the one selling these the i talked to larry and I asked him where they came from. And uh, yeah, Zurich Vapes, uh, Local Vape has them. So this is 100% built, fabricated, and manufactured in the United States. That alone is pretty cool for a regulated device. And this is a regulated device. This is the first regulated device that I've really, really, really like gushed over. It's just... It's beautiful to look at. It's beautiful to hold. If you see pictures of it, it's smaller than you think it is. It's much smaller than you think it is. And these X's, they come in stainless steel, brushed, wood, all kinds of weird nonsense. But there's no screen on it. And he told me there was no screen on it. And I kind of went, bah, why is there no screen on it? But then I thought, uh, I actually do like to adjust to taste. That's why it's one of the reasons I like the Hexome so much is because you can take a little toot adjust your wattage up, take a little toot, adjust your wattage up, take a little toot, adjust your wattage down, and just kind of fine tune it to exactly where you need it to be. And you don't have to, you know, go, oh, well, this is a, you know, 0 0.7, so I want this much wattage, this point this, or this is 0 0.2, I want this much wattage, this, you know, you don't have to do that. You adjust this to taste. So you're going to see an LED up there. Now, it's not going to show the colors, but it cycles through colors. So if you hold the down button, and just hold it it'll go green and that's the lowest wattage that's seven and a half watts and if you hold the plus button if you hold the plus side of this and just hold it and hold it and hold it you'll see it'll cycle it'll go green and then a little bit yellow and then orange and then a deeper orange and finally to red and when you're at red that's 200 watts so this whole color spectrum is kind of your wattage range and so what I do when I first got this I threw this atomizer on here I tried it at green it was a little bit weak so I just held down the top and I did it like a five count I was like one two three four five took a two still a little weak so I just tapped the up a little bit tried it tapped up a little bit perfect I don't know what wattage this is right now but I know that it's absolutely perfect for this atomizer Plenty, plenty of power. This chip in here was made and fabricated in Southern California. It's their own exclusive proprietary chip. It doesn't have a name. It's not like the Phantom chip or the Pizza Baron chip. It's just the Zurich X chip. It's their own chip in here 
fabricated, made in Southern California. The door is magnetic, and there's a little notch in the bottom, which I always love. Door comes off, wiring, very clean on the inside. You can see the chip right here. You can see your tactile switches. You can see the LED showing through right there. And it uses, evidently it uses some sort of pulse width modulation. I don't get like the rattlesnake, like the like sometimes you get like with other pulse modulation devices. I don't feel it, I don't hear it at all, but what I do hear, kind of like the EVIC, when you press the button, it goes like just, you'll be able to hear it. You'll be able to hear it. Headphone users, you'll be able to hear it. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? It's like a, it's like the faintest little sound, but I don't really even notice it unless I'm looking for it. This box is so comfortable to hold, so comfortable to use. Series, dual 18650, uh, up to 200 watts, accepts builds down to 0.1 ohms. So you could do a 0.11, you could do a 0.10 build on here and still have plenty of power, plenty of wattage to power it. This is a 0.12. It's firing it just fine. I know I'm not causing any damage to the buttons. I know I'm not causing any damage to the board. It's been great. It's been great so far. But like always with all my first impressions, I do need to spend a little bit more time with this. Uh, but so far, so far, it's been really good. This I am definitely, definitely, without a doubt, taking to Vape Mania with this Phenotype L Atomizer. This has just been... Uh, this has been just a fantastic vape. Let me have a... Uh, are you dry? Yeah, you're pretty dry there, fella. How'd you get so dry? Answer me. Just great. That was... Did you see my, like, Ruby Roo impression there? I did the statue. That's that's for you, Miss Ruby Roo. So, yeah. That's all the first impressions I got. That is a full half fucking hour of first impressions. That's too much, man. Let's wrap this up with the... Uh, well, let's wrap it up with my final segment. Reviews for things that never got reviews. All right, well, I apologize. I don't have a retro vaping segment prepared, but what I do want to do is the review for things that never got reviews. So what I have today is this. You see this? This is a great mod. This is the BMI from Beast Mode Mods. And I'm going to link in the description, of course, to where you can check them out. What's their, what's their web address? BeastModeMods.com. Com. And the reason the reason I didn't do a review for this is Matt, Mr. Matt from Suck My Mod, he released his review for this device back in March of this year, March 2015. And I watched it in March 2015, and I thought, wow, that is a really cool mod. And then I saw him at uh, at VPX in April, and he brought it with him. And I said, Matt, can I see that? And I'm looking at it. I'm like, wow, that's a that's a really nice mod. I watched his review. I, you know, I, I was, in, I was in fascinated. I'm like, that's a cool device. So fast forward to May when Vegas Vape Summit was, and I got one in May, which is already two months after Matt already did his review. So if I get something in May, April, May, uh, my review probably would have been in June. It would have been. Who, I, who cares? It's too late. <laughs> it's just too late. I don't want to compete with Matt. He did a great video, and I agree with everything he said. Everything he said in his video, I agree with. There's only one thing that I don't agree with him. I hate these buttons. These little BB-style buttons, I hate them. I hate them with a burning passion of a thousand suns. I get why they had those buttons in there. It's because it is so compact on the inside. Like if you look at the inside, it's all super clean. Super clean. It looks like a computer box. Everything's labeled. They even have BMI branded wraps around their wiring. And then there's this very little space over here for a button. So yeah, the BB button kind of makes sense in that format because on the inside it sticks out just a little bit. A MyTech switch on here would have had this much switch on the inside. It would have made the box way too wide, way too wide. Everything else about this mod is great. Spring-loaded 510 connection, eh, the BB buttons, I don't mind them so much for the adjustment. Has a three uh, SX350 chip on the inside, which 
Phil's already gone into great depths about the 350 chip, about the SX350, and it is. It's a good chip, up to 100 watts. I have the Phantom tank on here right now. I'm rocking it at 93 watts, <coughs> pardon me, 0 0.2 ohm coil, 5.4.5 volts, 93 watts. It's a great vape. This right here is a pretty fantastic little vape. I even like the where they put the little window. I like that it's right there. All the engraving on here, the BMI, it feels nice and it just looks super clean. They have it branded on the back, Beast Mode Mods, fabricated in Southern California, Beast Mode. It's a cool mod. There's one other thing that I really dislike about it and that's the back door. And Look, I don't have any suggestions on how they could have improved this design. I just know that I don't like this design. Maybe a notch, maybe a thumb notch where you could pull it off. As it stands on the back of the door, there's no, uh, there's no rails all along the back of it. So when you have your door on here, you can hold the mod and just pop it open like that constantly. And I find myself sitting here using it and after I'm done vaping it, I'll just hold it in my hand and use my thumb to pop this door around. It's not secure at all. It's not secure at all. And you don't, you don't slide the door back on, you pop the door back on. So you put the bottom in first, then you lay the top down and you go, and it pops all together and it feels so secure until you get your thumb on there and you start fiddling and you start moving around. What would have really helped uh, this is all they had to do was, I think I know what they could have done, put a positive rail on both sides of the doors going vertically, right? So it would have caught on that side and you wouldn't have been able, there would have been no play in this door like there is now. Play, loads of play. There would have been no play. And then you can put a notch here or here so you can just pop it off. And that would have solved everything. You can just pop it off, pop it off, pop it off, just like that. It would have solved everything. It would have solved the door play. It would have solved this constantly falling off. It's a great mod and it's really, really cool. I don't know how much it costs. Beastmodemods.com. I'm going to link in the description to Matt's review of it because quite frankly, if you want to see my review of it, just watch Matt's review of it. Fourth run has been sold out. Let's see if we can shop the BMI VR4 version 1. Fourth run. Mmm. coat finish, micro USB port, bottom vent holes, double 18650s, stainless steel tactile dishes, switches, heavy duty floating 510 can't charge it through the USB. Fourth run pre-orders will be open Monday the 8th at 12 p.m. Uh, anticipated delivery July 24th. July 24th. Okay, so evidently they don't make a lot of these. And of course, you know, uh, I got a green one. I got a zombie green one. And look, I get it. Grim green. I want everything in green. Future vendors of the world. I don't necessarily want everything in green. In fact, right now, I just want to give a quick shout out to Dot Mod. They sent me a, uh, a Petri and a, and a Dot Mod atomizer in blue and red. And that just made me so happy. I opened this package and I looked in there and I went, it's not green. It's not green. Don't get me wrong. Dude, I dig green. I dig green a lot. But I don't want everything I own to be green. See this copper that we talked about? That's badass. See this, this Titan? I picked this color out. It's blue with a blue drip tip that reminds me of like a Cheeksy Vapes drip tip. It's just super cool. So yeah, I get it. I like the green. I wish it was in a different color. I honestly would have preferred the stainless steel, I think. Uh, the stainless steel version of it, I got a picture of it, raw aluminum, that looks effing cool. I don't want polished chrome. That raw aluminum though, that looks super cool and even just the straight up black or even yellow just something to change it up other than green but yeah the bmi is cool but you have to get in on a pre-order for it i don't know series dual 18650 
SX350, it's cool. It's a cool ass mod that I never did a review for because Matt did his review for it back in March and my video would not have been out until June. And I would have uploaded it and people would have gone, Matt already did that like a year ago. You are really slow. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time with this. It's stayed in my rotation since I got it in May. I've been using it, I've been using it with this tank. I think it's great. I think it's just a great vape. I wish it had a different button, but I get why they can't do that. It is what it is, and it is the BMI, BeastModeMods.com. Shout out to them. Shout out to Beast Modes Mods. I apologize. Um, I didn't review this. I just didn't review it, but I'm putting it in this vlog right now, and I'll post a link in the description to Beast Mode Mods. I do had I had some other pictures and whatnot on uh, on Instagram and stuff like that. So yeah, that's that's a thing that was a review for a thing that never got that never got reviewed. Um, so that's what I got. I'm gonna wrap this vlog up as I kick over my freaking microphone. I'm gonna wrap this vlog up again. As you watch this, I'm gone. I'm down in North Carolina. I'm partying with my friends at Vape Mania. It's gonna be a really good time. I will be really slow at replying to everything. Emails, comments, everything. Facebook, the whole deal. I'll be heavily using Instagram, so that's probably where you'll find me during Vape Mania is on Instagram. But, as always, I do have a lot of cool stuff. Coming up in the future, um, you know, everything we just did a first impressions for, there's plenty of tanks, there's plenty of atomizer stuff, I still have that Kennedy version 2, so that Smoke Tech Cube X thing, I have the Swoop, I have the DNA 200s, I got the iStick 100 watt, got a lot of crazy, got a lot of crazy and cool stuff coming up. Hope to see you at one of these vape events, but that's what I got for today, everybody, and as always, I'm going to grab my Titan because I feel guilty for not taking it to Vape Mania. Let's keep on vaping.